বাংলাদেশী কলেজ ফিজিক্স ডিপার্টমেন্ট আজকে একটা কি প্রোগ্রামটা অ্যারেঞ্জ করেছে সেটা বেসিক্যালি ব্যাকগ্রাউন্ডটা হচ্ছে 75 ইয়ার্স অফ ইন্ডিয়া ফিজিক্স আজাদি কে অমৃত মহোৎসব উই আর প্রাউড টু হ্যাভ উইথ আস মিস্টার অরিজিত শে অরিজিত বেসিক ভেনিয়ন এনার্জি সাইক্লোট্রন সেন্টার বিসিসি এক্সট্রিম এনার্জি সাইক্লোট্রন সেন্টার বিসিসি এক্সপেরিমেন্টাল নিউক্লিয়ার ফিজিক্স ডিভিশন আছে टाइप ও যেটা নিয়ে বলবে যেটা আমাকে ওর ওপিএসটি গাইড ফিলো যেটা আমাকে বলেছে সেটা হচ্ছে যে ও ইন্টিগ্রাল ইনফিশন নিয়ে কিছু বলবে অ্যাক্সেসিবিলিটি অফ ডিপার্টমেন্ট অফ মার্কেটিং এর কাছে উই আর দা ডাইরেক্ট অফিস অফ ডিপার্টমেন্ট সো আই আই প্রেজেন্ট ইউ আই শুড নট সে এন এন্টায়ার প্রেজেন্টেশন অর আ আর হার্ড কপি আই প্রেজেন্ট ইউ সাম আই ইউ that's all our main motivation is that this idea should grow in you if you can at least think about them at least happen that would be uh, one of the aims of uh, this entire presentation uh, so uh, i shall be begin i shall be talking about this nuclear uh, fission which is called tagline this i have been to break is to bridge up and at the very end of my presentation i shall uh, try to justify why we want to break the rule so uh, 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 as i said was uh, before that uh, you have some presentation some activities and so i took this picture this this spectacular pictures in coming from the green uh, space telescope uh, uh, it's uh, all over the internet right now and it is spectacular however i am not going to talk about it i am going to talk about something that we have seen every day for the last i'm sure all of you have seen this for the last so so many years so this is the story of the biology so if you look at it when uh, suppose uh, when is the first time that we saw the biology in the next maybe in class time so if you can somehow get hold of that book in whatever condition that is if you look at the periodic table you will find it to be slightly different from the periodic table today the periodic table is actually growing so the periodic table if you look at it we all know elements in uranium and other elements of uh, there are like iron and uh, aluminum and all these things these are some things that uh, you have studied or still study about there in your chemistry and other things like that some parts of it come into your physics continuum also however at the very end of the periodic table this are this is gb so if you look at them you find that they are all here so what are these so these are the co called the super heavy elements i am not even sure that uh, this is uh, something that uh, you have heard about the box but these are one of the marvels of human that has been able to produce so elements above uranium so on part uranium that is uh, the 92nd element the last element which has been made so so uh, after from the 90th part and onwards they have all the made artificial and mankind and they hold the potential to propel human kind into the stellar sphere so that is a topic on what itself which i have not discussed much but i will invite you to look into it more so if you look at these elements these elements after 92 that is uh, 93 94 up to 118 the last element which has been discovered by mankind today is 118 and uh, there is a very interesting fact the person who discovered who after smooth 118 element has been discovered yuri ognesov is still alive so uh, think philosophically that 
You know, there's so many things to be remembered. They did statues, they did that, they did a big thing. At the end of the day, someday, everything is going to break down. But if you can have your name in this periodic table while you are still alive, this is something you are truly immortal. So, science, pursuing science, being in uh, touch with science, developing a deep means a career in science is something which is deep and very highly rewarding. So, uh, this is one of the messages I wanted to uh, bring, and this I have this. Uh, not an information to you. Uh, so now uh, in, in the more formal outline of my presentation. So I I I try to uh, introduce what these economic elements are. Other uh, something that we all got here about LHC and Big Bang are something that are widely published. But this is one key which is I feel it still has a lot of potential. A lot of work has to be done over there. But the publicity is not to that mark where, say, SARN and LHC, finding LHC occurs due to very simple quantum mechanical calculations. So, you see, what you study now in your bachelor's, that is actually the base on which everything else is going to stand. However, higher and higher up, however deep you go into business. So at the end of the day, the basic quantum mechanical principles, the basic classical principles, so this entire discovery of supernatural elements bases itself on the very first few chapters of whatever we have studied. If you have studied this quantum mechanics, that's the very base of what all these IE technological new sciences that are coming. So how is it connected? If you look at this distribution on the left hand side, you find that it is a uniform, it has uniform so energy. So, energy. energy. so if it has uniform energy, energy. 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 energy, our point is going to come that these energy levels are going to merge because of the uh, answer, uh, energy type uncertainty principle. However, if the potential for which you are calculating is not Exactly, also on the left side, we are studying classical mechanics, right? Natural boltzmann, carbon gas, both sides. If it is not exactly on the left side, if the potential changes, what you are going to get is you are going to start getting discretization, means more uniform energy distribution. And that was exactly what was seen in the nuclear potential. Means if you look at the, if you have a studied superhighway potential, you have studied the hydrogen atom problem, but if you look at nuclear potential, that is a lot more complicated. And that was what was seen that for the nuclear potential, the energy distribution was not a very uniform distribution. And because it is not a uniform distribution, we have the existence of such shell effects which result in the existence of such the element. However, our discoveries still late have exactly not been able to pinpoint at what point this discretized uh, non uniform energy levels maximizes it. That is why we are still looking for that ideal of supernatural energy. That is why we still do not have which may, which may ultimately help us to generate more energy, store more energy in a very small space. So how are these energy elements produced today? So whatever discoveries are going on, so what we do is we take a small projectile. It is like throwing one small sphere against a flat and then fusing the two. So here I have shown you two examples of a magnesium being thrown on a target of another element from QBS. So and together they merge together to form this cluster. So you can do it that way, or you can do it an iron beam on a target of lead. So what you do is you take a, a lot of lead nuclei, you, you fix it up on a target, and then you somehow manage to energize this iron or magnesium beam, and you throw it against each other. Now, why do you need a energized beam? We all know of the Coulomb uh, repulsion, right? So uh, think of it: you have two highly charged particles. And you 
factor in forming each other order. So that ten to the power minus fifteen. So the total repulsion between them will be huge, right? Without even calculating it, you can have an idea of the kind of magnitude of repulsion that you need to have. So in order to overcome that repulsion, you need to throw that ball at a very high energy, accelerator, which I will discuss later on. Uh, and so you need energized projectiles like magnesium, iron, and such projectiles. Now, is this an easy experiment? No. So, how do we measure this cross section? We measure this cross section in a unit called bar. So, I will just go. It's visible, right? Yeah. So, you measure it in terms of bar. Why do I call it bar? Or what exactly is this bar? So, uh, if you are, uh, you know, say, uh, shooting an arrow at a good side, so you are not going to see the good side in uh, exactly a uh, three dimensional unit. How is the good side for you? It will look just like a circle, a two dimensional circle. So, a bar is nothing but a projection of that nucleus. In a two dimensional space. And you also take into account, but exactly it's not a rigid sphere, you mm -hmm. also take into account the attractive potential, the repulsive potential. So yeah. if you take into consideration all these things, what is going to happen? You are going to take a number which is equivalent to a small circle in a two dimensional space. And that is in the order of 10 to the power minus for a typical nucleus, it is in the order of 10 to the power minus 20 per centimeter square. So if I could hold one nucleus in my hand and throw anything at it, the entire cross section it will be equivalent to 10 to the power minus 20 per centimeter square. Now, for these kind of experiments, the cross section reduces to one into 10 to the power minus 15. That's minus 15 into minus 24 centimeters square. That is, you are throwing a small projectile at something 10 to the power minus 24 meters of D. So, for the discovery of such elements, you will typically need uh, 6 to 12 months to get one single event. So these are something, these are fantastic experiments, which are not kept to be possible to be carried out at every place all over the world. So these are highly collaborative experiments where one country cannot sustain these kind of experiments. So all countries come together and uh, uh, design these experiments. So these experiments are carried out all over the world. There is a lab in Russia, which is called the uh, Joint Institute of Nuclear Research. Then uh, there is a lab in uh, Germany called uh, GSI, where some experiments are carried out. There is, there, are, uh, there is a lab in USA where some experiments are carried out, and there is a lab in Japan called NIKE. So there are four places, four or five places all over the world, where all of these kind of experiments are carried out. Now, uh, these, uh, everyone participates in these experiments, and if you uh, are passionate about uh, this and uh, you feel that uh, this is something that you like to work upon. You can also be a part of this experiment. So uh, there, there are so many aspects which you have to take care of. So everyone plays a very vital role when such experiments are discovered. Uh, so uh, this is the uh, experiment that I was uh, talking about. So these uh, are this is how at the present moment uh, these elements are produced. So now I'll come into nuclear fission and I will. Later on, uh, connect how starting nuclear fission actually helped us to go towards these material. Nuclear fission is something that I'm sure you have heard about, all of you have heard about. Not because you have to study in a textbook, but because you have either read this uh, research from a very, very popular model, or you have read it from some newspaper, or you have seen from a movie, or movie is coming out. This has to be something. Which has always been very popular, uh, both in a uh, good way as well as uh, in a bad way, uh, uh, among uh, uh, the uh, movie industry. 
so uh, there are still movies coming on like Oppenheimer is about, and you have most probably seen Parmaan, and there are so much more. Why is this? Because the nuclear fission brought about an entire age, a change of the way human beings live, a change in the way that human beings think, a change in the way that human beings uh, uh, interact with each other. Like when, uh, I mean, USA had the uh, atomic bomb, then uh, Russia wanted one, then uh, the UK problem, you all uh, look at it, you all have an idea of what this is. And then uh, with uh, nuclear power being a strong uh, topic of debate, because uh, people are, uh, some people are, are very much for it, some people are against it. So, nuclear fission is a very hard topic. So uh, that is why nuclear fission has been so much popular, uh, even though it is almost it is a discovery almost 80 years old, but it is still something that affects human lives even today. So the, as I was telling you, uh, the nuclear fission was discovered almost 80 years ago, and quite accidentally. So if you have uh, uh, haven't read the story about the discovery of the nuclear fission. I strongly urge you to uh, uh, read about uh, this discovery because uh, it is very important that when you are getting a wrong result, it's not always wrong. So uh, you should always wonder that what you are getting. So that might actually lead you to a new discovery. So uh, this is a this shining story of how what was once what we are wrong experiment. And uh, you know, people do not have that much of that much uh, to do that they want to do. Actually, they were discovering this change everything. So, uh, uh, so uh, you can mention being discovered 80 years ago. So, uh, it was discovered of the disintegration of uh, this uh, million people, right? And uh, this, uh, uh, this topic, So, you all know that a uh, huge amount of energy is released in the so almost 200 energy of energy is released because uh, uh, when this uh, uranium-236 breaks up, uh, it, is, it releases its binding energy. So it is like the process and the simple thing like calculation gives you this 200 energy. And this 200 energy is the very heart of any uh, nuclear reactor that is operating uh, in India, outside India, everywhere. So, uh, now, at the time of the discovery, nuclear fission was something that was fantastic. Everyone was thinking about it. Experimentalists were thinking about it. Uh, there was actually six fraternity at that time. So, uh, this is a uh, uh, paper by Bill uh, Bohm. And after that, more uh, papers came out. And uh, I will uh, strongly urge you that uh, these papers. By these standards, are not very uh, hard to read. So when you have, when you have time, or uh, if you have, uh, if you are taking up a small project, sometimes go through this way. You will find that whatever you have learned till date, till uh, even your second year in uh, AFC, that will be sufficient to understand this paper and uh, the joy of reading such a uh, paper because it is so well written and these are the very so, uh, uh, I strongly argue that sometimes do take up time to ponder on them. So, uh, this uh, is also an example of uh, when uh, this mission was discovered, people were actually not looking for mission because they had absolutely no idea that something like that could happen. What they wanted to do is that they just wanted to attach one more neutron to a uranium nucleus. But ultimately, this led to a discovery of uh, the intervention process, and uh, this ultimately changed the world, as I was saying to you. And the uh, nuclear fission is a part of the nuclear power technology. And you must uh, think about this that today, standing in a country like India, which has a very high demand, which is going to increase for power. And the, along with the increase, we also have to understand that with 
the climate changing you can feel the climate change even if you are standing in calcutta you can probably feel that the rainy season has climate change these are all effects of global warming so the time has come where we need to shift towards other modes of generation of nuclear power and for another power one of which so uh, along with decreasing the devastating effects on the environment so nuclear power has that potential for country that we need so that is why uh, researching any research even however small your input may be may one day be the very base with which the next generations are going to proceed so that is why uh university driven research research in basic science will ultimately play a very important role in building future society so next i am to uh, the accelerator technology uh, this is also uh, information which i want to pass on calcutta has been uh, a city of cyber why you are here city of cyberspace because at present we are one of the very few cities all over the world and when i say very few cities i mean that is a counted in hand where there are three cyberspace working simultaneously within city limits so we have two cyberspace at bcc and there is one more uh, at raja uh, ghat uh, which is producing very medical cyberspace Cancer therapy, cancer prevention. Calcutta is the only city in India, and perhaps only there is one more city, maybe in China, where there are three cyclones going. Even in Europe, in USA, there are at the most one or two cities where such uh, so many cyclones are functioning at the same time, all working for research, for production of isotopes. And for the in general, the benefit of climate change. So uh, this is a thing to be proud about. Yet uh, this message is not brought forward that uh, we are the city of cyclones. And historically, Calcutta uh, was also one of the first cities where Bengal Shah actually made a very strong cyclone in the city of Uttar Pradesh. One of the first cities of the world that. So uh, when uh, you are uh, representing Calcutta anyway, be sure to mention the fact, this fact also, that we are one of the very few cities of cyclones across the globe. So uh, we in India not so in a uh, wealthy country, yet we are with whatever limited resources we are, we are competing with the world. So uh, these are the cyclones that I was talking about, which are presently working in Calcutta. The rotary cyclone, uh, which uh, is used for basic research at uh, BCC, uh, at BCC, this is inside the BCC campus. The superconducting cyclone. Superconducting cyclone is a cyclone which can deliver more energy, more electric beam, and this is one of the handful of cyclones which actually has a superconducting magnet. So this, uh, you all have uh, some idea of superconductivity that you have to uh, go to very low temperatures to get uh, to reduce the uh, resistivity and uh, uh, to increase magnetic fields. So superconducting cyclotron, there are at the most three or four superconducting cyclotrons working across the globe. One of them is very near to you. So uh, this is something to be very very proud of. And then we have the recently commissioned medical cyclotron. Then we have started production of the medical isotopes so that our society can benefit for cancer therapy, for cancer detection. Uh, these uh, isotopes earlier used to be uh, bought at huge amounts, at huge costs from outside India. Today we are self sufficient, we are producing it, and the costs are less than one third of whatever we are buying from. The cost value, I'm not even talking about the cost value that. Was actually giving provision one third of the cost value, and they are being uh, given to different uh, uh, hospitals across Canada. And uh, this is a uh, uh, award. 
So, uh, to give you a very basic idea of what a cyclotron is, so a cyclotron is a machine to energize a charge particle. That's as simple as What's the easiest way to energize a charge particle? That is, you get a capacitor, a plate, a positive plate, and a negative plate, and if you say, uh, give uh, to a negatively charged particle inside it, the negatively it is going to get attracted towards the negative. So, uh, doing, for doing that, you need to apply some voltage across the plate. So, suppose I want to uh, evaluate a particle with any so that stands in for 6 electron. I would have to apply a to the 6 volts across that plate, which is a very, very hard thing to do. So, what else can I do? What you can do is actually, if you use multiple plates, and then energize it small steps. So suppose uh, you make uh, three things. So one way, one way, one way. So first you put 10 volts. Then you put 20 volts. So this is going to go gradually, this is going to increase. So and then you can energize it. But this process has a limitation, which is exactly that is what is done across a linear accelerator, what is called a linear accelerator. But uh, doing this will require a huge area. So there is a better way. What is that? You can just use a sun. So that is exactly what is done. So if you look at it, if you can, instead of putting it in a line, in a linear path, you can just rotate it across. If you just put it in a circular path, then you can easily achieve this kind of voltage, this kind of high energies in a very small thing. So that is exactly that. What is done? Just like so, this is a moon as a cyclotron, and over time is a scale of 500. That's the first time it's a cyclotron. And uh, why is this uh, high energy needed? As I told you, that one is to overcome the barrier. And uh, the second thing, you have to go if you want to look at this same object. So, you should have a flow which has a variance of comparison to the dimension of this object. So if, if you have to look at the uh, nucleus, which is in Fermi meter order, you have to be in the board of any order uh, that, that way, if you calculate the number of the of this, you will be able to reach the dimension of the object in the equation. So, uh, this, uh, this is the cyclotron that, that I was talking about. So, how do you take a, 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 a charged particle in a circular path? That answer you already know. You have been studying this from your school level. So, the path of any charged particle across a perpendicular magnetic field is circular. So, if you can just apply a perpendicular magnetic field across the path of the charged particle, it is going to go in a circular path. And if you can somehow increase the voltage in step by step, in a very small region, you will be able to achieve that high energy. So this is how the very basic principle, something that you have been studying from your teacher's level, is ultimately applied in higher studies, in higher research. So as I was saying, the foundations that you are ready right now, Will be the very base of which the government will go So, uh, next I come to how do we detect these charged particles? Say, fission is happening, so two charged particles is there. So, what we use is known as this multi wire proportional counter. It is a very simple object. What is it that object? This also has a very simple idea. The idea being, in a cube, if you take gas, say any gas, and a charged particle enters. So what is going to happen? You are going to put in a charged particle in a bubble of gas. So that will result in this some of the gas molecules becoming charged and by collecting this charged gas uh, gas molecule, this electron across a wire, you can easily detect and by attaching a gold finger over here, so you can easily what you already have to do is to collect the gas molecule. 
the problem be the charge particle the charge particle that was coming that was small charge right so now when it entered the gas volume it charged it charged up some more gas now these gas molecules when they hit each other when they are uh, inside this gas volume they are going to charge up more of the uh, surrounding gas molecules so that way you will have a collection of charge of electrons and positive ions and by collecting these positive ions across the wire and by just looking at it with a ammeter or a voltmeter you can have an idea of whether a charge particle has fallen inside your detector so this is exactly what is done in the end of the PC where there is a series of wires and we fill it up with gas and we try to bring a, 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 a suitable electric field so that we can make this. So this was uh, discovered by George, someone called George Charter and we got a Nobel Prize in that. So these are the gas detectors that we have at BCC. These are completely made by us, by hand and uh, using this detector we uh, carry out a series of experiments which, uh, uh, through which we study. So why is that fission? I have been talking about recording elements and the summary and talk about fission. We study fission because you see this is a evaporation density, it's the scale of that formation of that scale. And this is the scale of the fission. However, this all of this is originated from the same compound system, which is known as a compound nucleus. So by studying the properties of this fission, we can actually impart some of the properties of this compound nucleus. So by from studying the properties of this compound nucleus, we can actually predict some of the properties of this material. So that way we can eliminate which process or rather get an idea of which processes is actually going to help you. Both towards that material. So, why study fission? Studying the properties of fission generally takes an experiment of around five to six days. Whereas, I told you, for studying the properties of such primary element, we take a year or So, what we can quickly do, we can study fission, the properties of the fission of that system, and then optimize the best parameters and carry out the model of. And these fission experiments are the kind of experiments that we have as a setup at BCC and also at other facilities in India. So, if you want to carry out research in India, there is a lot of scope and you ultimately play a very important role towards the greater discovery. So, as I was talking to you, I, I, uh, I want to show you this. This is the potential. A typical complicated potential that uh, is governing a nucleus. However, to visualize that, if you look at a typical Himalayan landscape, you will see that actually is reflected. So, nature is a very huge, that is a, that is a fact. So, uh, the kind of potential, the complicated calculations that and that we are actually carrying out, if you just look around you, that is already there. So, uh, this typical landscape, we often show this. So, these kind of landscapes that are very similar to the kind of landscapes that we have in the Himalayas and in other mountain ranges. So, uh, today you have uh, some uh, talk about astrophysics. So, I'd like to make it a small portion of astrophysics. So you see, we have a very basic idea of the abundance of different elements in the universe. Yet, we have absolutely not even 50 percent explanation of how these uh, elements actually form. <coughs> so, these quantum elements are, as I have already told you, that uh, these are created in the laboratory. Do they not occur in nature? Actually, there is a conjecture. That yes, they do appear. So this is a supernova explosion. I, I, I hope that all of you have heard of 
supernova explosions, you know, stars exploding, red giant explosions. So, a supernova explosion, it is a conjecture that these supernova events are actually formed in nature. These kind of explosions. Because if these elements were not stored, then we have some idea of how they are formed in the universe. But we have some idea of how they are formed in the universe. But we still do not have a complete explanation to actually define that why we have so and so percentage of gold and platinum and other in lay these kind of elements in nature. So actually, Thank you, Okay, I'm going to put two partners. 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 I'm going to put